In this episode, we are talking about why we're renting versus buying our primary residence, even though this year we've bought six houses, eight doors. Let's yeah. jump in. Hey, welcome to Investing with the Baldwinos. I'm Josh. I'm Hannah. And this is our story in real estate investing. If you're new to this channel, this is us documenting our journey building wealth uh, through real estate investing. And in this episode, we are talking about why we are moving. Yay! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Those who don't know, we currently have six rental properties, eight doors, one that's going to be a short-term rental, um, but we are still not going to buy our primary residence. Mm-hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Why not? <laughs> they why? Do you know why? Uh, because we can't afford it. <laughs> Wait, hold on. You just sprung this on me. I thought follow the script. No, this is the more fun part. So why? Oh, uh, because um, if we bought a property right now in the Bay Area, then all of our money funds that we would have would just go directly into just trying to like survive. And we're not just trying to survive. We're trying to excel thrive man thrive. That, that was uh, like there was an opportunity there opportunity for what you said we're not trying to survive we're trying to thrive like no, oh okay, not... okay okay let's just let's try it no it's too late what it's done you, you missed it i'm sorry no, you could edit for those who you are watching edit. at home she missed it <laughs> let me know in the comments below that she missed it you could edit it i could edit it but should we <laughs> okay. okay yes she's exactly right right we could buy a house here in the bay area potentially um but we're not just because it would siphon all of our cash it would siphon all of our free flowing you know if, if siphon all of our income mm-hmm. um and then we would be house poor uh very different buying a house here than in some other areas i know it's this is not popular opinion uh and we're going to talk about why we're choosing to rent an apartment okay so for those who don't know we live with my parents house thank you mom and dad i never call them mom and dad though <laughs> Thank you to them for letting us live here and allowing us to save so much money by rental properties that's really going to help subsidize our mortgage payment here in the Bay Area. Um, we don't want to leave San Jose. Yes, because both of our families are, both sides of our family are here in the Bay Area and we have two crazy children. So we need this, the help. <laughs> yes. So we moved back from Honolulu to San Jose when Ezra was born. And so now with them being you know, being here, um, we just, that's a non-negotiable for us, Mm -hmm. especially with the newborn and the toddler. Um, So, Mm. and both of our jobs are in San Jose. She got a new job. More on that later. (laughs) Um, But so yes, non-negotiable for us. So how can we afford to live in the Bay Area in San Jose, not on crazy tech Google salaries that you see on TikTok? Have you seen those videos? Those videos are so good. What? Like, oh, here's how much I make as a Google engineer. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, we're not on that. We won't, yeah, we won't ever get there. So, <laughs> me, so we're going to get geeky. I'm going to tell you why numerically I feel more comfortable renting than buying a house. Mm-hmm. Let's jump into the screen share real fast. And first off, the median home price right now of San Jose is $1.25 million. That's crazy. <laughs> you didn't realize that, huh? No. So it's like, one, how can we afford a $1.2 million house? That is nuts. And this is for your like your average run-of-the-mill, like three-bedroom, two-bath house, like nothing crazy, like built in like 1980. This is not a new build. If you're looking at a new build, you're probably looking at like 1.7, 1.8, which, God, that is a big monthly payment. So <laughs> one, that's crazy. What the mortgage payment on that is would be just ridiculous. Um, I, you know, some other people are saying, hey, I'm looking for a house hack in the Bay Area. Uh, for those who don't know what house hacking is, babe, do you know what house hacking is? Yes, it's when you buy a multifamily, oh, when you buy a multifamily unit and you live in one of the units and then you rent out the other units. Does it, wait, does it have to be a duplex or can it be like, a four unit or a five unit or six unit. Yeah, it could be as many units as you want. Um, or it could even be a one house we rent out by the room. I think with two small kids, we are not doing by the room. Um, we don't want roommates anymore, which is why we're moving out. Um, and to look at a duplex, and I've thought about this. And so I'm breaking down the numbers for you guys in San Jose, in the Bay Area, who are saying, hey, I want a house hack to subsidize my uh, rental income. 
I will just say good luck. <laughs> uh, I think there is a possibility if you do short-term rentals or you do travel nurses, you can't do short-term rentals in San Jose either. So it has to be basically a travel nurse. Um, but here, so if you're saying, uh, let's go ahead and let's look at, find my screens here. Uh, let's look at multifamily. Um, let's look at multifamily homes in San Jose, right? You're looking at anywhere between 2 million, 1.3, 1.6. This is obviously, these are bigger complexes, but in general, they're at least above 1.1, 1 .1, right? So for people that don't really know the area that well, point out like a kind of not so nice area, like a C or D neighborhood and let, and how much is that area? Yeah, I mean, where the multifamilies are, that's the that's downtown San Jose. I'd say it's a C area. Um, there's there's east side here where there's and again San Jose was built with not a lot of but not a lot of multifamilies in mind. Now again California is changing the zoning laws if they want to do new builds yada yada yada. But I'm just saying right now for a family if we want to get into a house somewhere else to live, you know, in the next month, this is not an option. Um, so let's just say for example, you know, hey Josh, let's house hack three and a half percent down uh, into a duplex. If you've looked into it, there are for the FHA loan, which is your three and a half percent down, where you still get PMI for your mortgage, right? For a duplex, the max you can get is one million fifty-three thousand dollars as a loan amount. Which means, if I'm buying a duplex here, right, um, that one point three, I still have to bring two hundred thousand dollars to the closing table to to close on that duplex. Do you know how many houses I could buy as rental properties or short-term rentals with two hundred thousand dollars? Like that's crazy, and that's like this one point three looks like the middle. <laughs> you just got so passionate about well, that because it's just nuts. <laughs> it's like okay, you know, okay. So let's say, hey, one point five. This area here is an okay area. I would say it's like a C plus area, not the best area in the world. Really close to the freeways. Um, and I looked at it already, right? This is a, for those who don't see here, it's a four bedroom, two bath, 1200 square feet. That means you're living at 600 square feet per side, super small, mm. uh, but a very nicely well-maintained duplex. I look at this outside. No, it looks nice. Yeah, it looks it's perfect. clean. Mm -hmm. um, there's no picture of the inside, which means that, you know, in addition to whatever you'd have to bring to the closing table, because again, right? This is listed at 1.15. Your max FHA limit is 1.5, which means you're still bringing at least $100,000 to the closing table, not including closing costs, not including uh, any repairs you have to make on the inside, because for whatever reason, they don't want to show what the inside looks like. So you know, what's funky. Isn't that good? Come on. Funky. Anyways, check us out, babe. Yes. Checking. Okay. Say we did bring that $100,000 to the closing table. That's your monthly mortgage payment. Mm, that's a lot. It's a lot more than we can actually afford, right? $6,364. Now you're saying, yes, it's a house hack. Yes, I get that. I do, right? You're like, hey, someone's going to pay half of it. On a 600 square foot, two bedroom, one bath apartment, you, I mean, you can Zillow rentometer. It's actually called Rentometer. I saw that on their Instagram today. Oh. Oh, it's not rentometer. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, anyways, on a 600 square feet, two bedroom, one bath, you're probably looking at like 2,400 in, uh, in, in gross rents a month, which means let's just say that was 6,400. You're still paying $4,000 a month to live. Mm. And that's still uh... $4,000 for your mortgage PITI of your share that's subsidized and portion of it subsidized by your tenants. Uh, for a 600 square foot, two bedroom, one bath. That is, that's, that's tight. That's rough. Um, okay. So for us, I don't know, like it, it wasn't worth it. I mean, yes, you could potentially rent it out to travel nurses, maybe make more money. And this actually this area, if you're looking, there is a couple of nice hospitals by here. Um, so it's a potential. Um, but uh, if you're looking at the mortgage payment too, so check this out. This is not including PITI, property taxes, and all that stuff. Um, that's why it says 5,300 here. But this is for if you did the max FHA loan amount, 30-year, at a 4.5% interest rate. 
uh, your amorti- amortization schedule. Mm-hmm. Did I pronounce that correctly? I have no idea. Do you know what that is? No, sure don't. As soon as you started talking numbers, I kind of faded out. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. So amortiz- amortiz- Let me know how to pronounce this. But I could Google it. But, you know, I, I, I appreciate the comments. I like it. It means you guys are listening. It's cool. So let me know, like, in, like, the phonetic way how to pronounce this. Mm-hmm. But this is basically how much you're how much you're paying every single month and what portion of it goes to your principal, which means that the actual loan balance, and then what goes to the interest, which is money that the bank gets. Because mm. interest is what you're paying the bank. And if you didn't know up front, you pay more in interest than your actual principal balance for the first, I don't know, 20 years. And then it eventually it levels off. So that means for the first, this is December 21, I'm paying $4,000 a month in just interest. Mm. That doesn't go to your principal. So yes, this 1300 can go and I could save that. Sure. But don't forget, you still put in over a hundred to $200,000 down for this property. And wh- how far do you have to scroll here to get it to be equal? We're like six years. We are now at 10 years. It's getting closer. We're at 15 years. At 15 years, you're now equal, but you're still paying a lot of interest. So yes, I could we could be potentially throwing rent to the man. I get it. But that's but they're not, not taking a hundred thousand dollars of our money up front to get locked up, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. You're such a personality right now. <laughs> Listen, do you appreciate the personality? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Please give it a like, subscribe, follow, all that good stuff. Look, you got to just like just because she's doing a video while she's feeding the baby. That's true. And her arms are burning, but she doesn't want to show it. (laughs) No, it's not gotten to that point yet, but maybe like five, 10 minutes. Okay. Anyways, so yes, you could do that. You could do the travel nurses. You can make money. Sure. But, but our lifestyle with kids and all that stuff, like we're not trying to live that vibe right now. At least we're not with our own primary house. Yeah. Um, so, and then for those who are thinking, hey, but when you move out, you can get another tenant in there. If you think about it, if one side's written for 2,400, the other side's written for 2,400, that's 4,800. You're still cash flow negative if your payments are $6,500 a month. It's just... I don't know. It's hard for me to wrap around the primary. I'm in that firm belief that your primary residence, the roof over your head is a liability, not an asset because it doesn't make you money. Hashtag rich dad, poor dad. (laughs) If you haven't read that book, read that book. Um, Okay. So with that being said, we are moving Uh, and we're moving into an apartment. Three years later, we are finally moving into an apartment of our own. I don't know if I ever told you, but actually, I, 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 on Jess's podcast yesterday, I said this one of one thing I know that like you would talk about self awareness and social media and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, living with like moving back in with my parents for this long, it's it's not a comfortable thing. It doesn't feel good when you talk to your peers, your bosses, your coworkers, whoever it is, to say, "Hey, I still live with my parents." And so this platform where we're constantly saying that has been like a nice little I don't know, not therapy or part of the self-awareness journey. Huh. I didn't know you felt uncomfortable about that. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, listen, like we both, we both have master's degrees, mm. which I don't know if that was worth it, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> um, I don't know. Everyone's, I ever feel like everyone's reaction when I tell them is, is like, yeah, that makes sense. Save money while you can. And, and like we're Asian, a lot of Asian cultures are very like, st- you know, live with your parents kind of thing. So that is true. And mm-hmm. I will say, as long as the excess, cl- we've been made, we obviously, you know, we've bought a few properties with the money that we've saved. Mm-hmm. If you're putting the money to work instead of just blowing it on stupid stuff, mm-hmm. then it makes sense. Yeah. Right. Make the money work for you. You don't work for the money. <laughs> She wants her own Instagram clip, guys. That's really what it is. Um, I think the last argument will say like, oh, what about the appreciation? You have a rebuttal for that? Uh, What is appreciation? (laughs) I like know what that means, but (laughs) you know when things like get bigger, 
right oh no no no, no. pause wait hold on it's bigger <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> it's a family so show things. this is wait, a family no, 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 no. show <laughs> <laughs> when things uh become worth more over time right oh, yeah <laughs> okay yeah so i mean obviously everyone talks about oh what about bay area appreciation and yes i will probably we will probably miss out on some bay area appreciation mm -hmm. but for that reason we're also dumping our money we're dumping every excess amount of cash flow into another market Right, whether it be a vacation rental market, whether it be Columbus, whether it be wherever it is, like we're trying to capture that appreciation somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yes, instead of paying the interest of the bank, we're just giving it to some rental property for now that'll give us more space. Um, and just, I mean, it's nicer than a 600 square foot two bedroom apartment, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. It's a class A yeah. minus property. It's not, it's not it's not the nicest nicest one yeah. but that's like another four thousand dollars a month and that extra thousand dollars a month is some chalk up Ooh. just a non-numerical reason is that for family purposes did you hear that I'm, I'm making one of the bedrooms a, wonder, a studio but, i wonder know. if that caught it but yeah. um another non-numerical reason is related to family is because eventually our kids are going to be going to school somewhere around here. So I just feel like it doesn't make sense to like make roots in a certain neighborhood if we don't know exactly where they're going to be schooling. Because our kid, the first one is going to be in preschool, kindergarten at some point in like two less than two years. And then this one will eventually get there. And so why should we get like a home home when we don't know where we're going to end up, what neighborhood we're going to end up at for school? Yes, and the neighborhoods with the good school districts, like that duplex I showed you, not a great school district. <laughs> um, and that's things that we have to think about now that I've never really thought about, especially now as you're thinking about, you know, buying properties for yourself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll see where we end up buying, when we end up buying, and hopefully, you know, we get to a point where the cash flow, you know, for me ideally is if we have $20,000 a month in positive cash flow, that allows us to quit our jobs that, you know, gives us that comfortable one third amount of your income that helps subsidize for a $6,000 mortgage um, without being, you know, so cash strapped. Uh, and that's why our immediate goal is to get more short term rentals. Right. Instead of spending $100,000, $120,000, as you saw through you know, the share screen uh, of buying a primary house, we could buy two short term rentals. And those two short term rentals, depending on the market, could net, that's after all expenses, could net between eight and $12,000 a month. And that combine that with the other one that we have now puts us like one more away from making $20,000 a month. So that's why we're super gung ho. Like she's like, oh, I just want to to get to a point where our rent, <laughs> rental, our rent, our rent is taken care of through our positive cash flow and not necessarily our W twos. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. So yes, in yeah. general, we're gonna spend the money that we could put on a down payment on more short term rentals with the idea that they will continue just continue just give us more cash over time um, so that we can have the flexibility to do whatever we want. Um, what was I going to say? If you're interested in an apartment tour and decorating and all that stuff, all that, like I should be analyzing more deals and I'm sorry for all the partners that we have around. I haven't <laughs> analyzed as much because man, I'm having a really fun furniture shopping. I'm having really fun. Anyways, we will, <laughs> we will show you all that. You know, we're also going to break down how we're subsidizing a portion of the rent because I'm dedicating one of them to our real estate office and YouTube office that now becomes a business expense. Ooh, that should be a good episode. I know. I'll tax in. savings. Oh my goodness. You know, I'm doing a tax saving episode on Monday though in Joshua Tree. Root oh. for her, pray for her. She'll be by herself as I'm in Joshua Tree with you. So anyways, that is why we're not buying a primary house, even though we already have six houses, eight doors, and we're still going to go rent. Mm -hmm. Word. <laughs> it's your favorite. <laughs>
action. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, again, I'm Josh. You can find me on Instagram, on TikTok, at Josh Uwa. It's fun. No? Underscore Baldabino. She likes to be hidden. You'll yeah. randomly see pieces of it on my Instagram. <laughs> um, let me know if you have any comments down below. If you agree or disagree on our rationale, mm. let me know. I mean, I think it's just fun, right? Like, there's no wrong answer, but that's our right answer. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, we'll definitely do some kind of like uh, apartment before and after, you know, like the little grave thing with the TikTok that everyone does. <laughs> sure. Um, okay, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers. Ooh, oh, I'm empty. Oh, wow. You drink it way too fast. I'll do it. Cheers. Mine. Ah. <laughs> <laughs>